So hi everyone, uh, I just wanted to make this bonus video to talk through some of the details uh, in quantitatively addressing scattering uh, by a potential step, and in particular understanding the transmission and reflection coefficients. Uh, now in order to do that, we're going to do a few things. Uh, so I want to spend a few minutes talking about uh, conservation of charge and current density in e and m. Uh, so an, an example that I think helps us understand the nature of the probability current in quantum mechanics, uh, because the probability current is what we need uh, to sort of do the analysis. Um, we'll then uh, go through uh, calculating the probability currents uh, for scattering, um, assuming that the energy is larger than v naught. Uh, we'll go through the boundary conditions to get uh, quantitative results for those coefficient uh, for these uh, for the reflection and the transmission coefficient. I then I'll say a few things about the analysis when the energy is less than v naught. Okay, so let's get started here. So charge and current density. So the physical situation I want you to think about uh, is the following. So let's imagine I have some sort of one-dimensional thick wire. So let's say I had like a, a tube of, of some metal or something. Um, and let, we'll assume that this is a 1D situation. So you know, we, 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 so, so everything's sort of uniform within the wire. Uh, the the idea right is that if I is that the the charge right there there's some there there is uh, there there's there's uh, mobile charge in here and that I can always describe um, the charge density so with uh, inside my wire uh, and that's rho so that's that's a charge per unit volume. Um, now, uh, what you you probably talked about electric current in uh, one uh, eighteen and two twenty five. Uh, what we're going to talk about now is current density uh, j, and uh, and I'll just treat it as a scalar since this is one d, uh, and that's really the that's the current divided by the cross sectional area. Let's see if we can't label that. Um, of my wire. So, and you might have talked, uh, current density might have come up uh, in your uh, study of uh, magnetism uh, and like when you looked at things like Ampere's law. So, here's, here's the deal. Uh, so it turns out that I can write down what's called a continuity of charge uh, equation that basically says that charge can't be create, uh, created or destroyed. Um, so any change in the charge density uh, has to come because there's current, there's a net flow of current out of some given volume. So let me let me write down the equation and then I'll unpack it. So the uh, continuity equation says the following, that uh, the time, uh, the partial derivative of rho, uh, and with respect to time, and rho we assume can vary both spatially and in time, so I'm writing it as a partial derivative, turns out to be minus dj dx. So let me label one more thing here. So let me just label the current here. Let's assume we have some current flowing to the right for, for sake of argument. Okay. Let's just think about what's going on in the situation where the, the current and therefore the current density is the same all along the wire. If the current coming in on the left here is the same as the current flowing out on the right here, right, then we have sort of the same amount of charge per unit time coming in. As a, as is leaving the volume, and and since you know charge can't magically be created or destroyed, the total charge in the volume and hence the charge density is going to stay the same. 
However, if there is some sort of spatial spatial variation in the current, so for instance, if like the current was larger on the left than here on the right of this sort of imaginary volume, well, if there's more current flowing in here than it's flowing out here, you would you would probably think that the charge inside this volume is going to go up, and that's exactly what this says, right? So. So the rate of change of the charge in my volume is equal to right this how how quick the the sort of spatial variation of my current de uh, density and the derivative and there's a minus sign here because of the situation I just talked about uh, if the current density is decreasing as we go across I should also have really drawn a coordinate system here this is the plus x direction. Uh, and the current density is decreasing, that's when you uh, have a situation of charge piling up inside this volume and giving you a positive d rho dt. Uh, <clears throat> so hopefully that's sort of an intuitive sort of sense of what sort of this continuity idea uh, uh, means. I've been a little hand wavy, but hopefully you can convince yourself by like thinking about units that the, the units here are at least plausible. Uh, so for folks who have had some multivariable calculus, the generalization of this to 3D, which we'll talk about in upper level E and M, is that d rho dt uh, ends up being minus, you think of the current density as a vector field rather than just a scalar, uh, and it goes like minus the divergence of the vector current density, um, but that's sort of, that's an aside for now, and I think you can convince yourself that uh, this reduces to that, you know, if, if j vector j equals like j, uh, j sub x. Okay, so this leads us to the idea of the probability current in quantum mechanics. So this time, instead of thinking about charge, we're interested in thinking about probability density. And remember that um, we can write, think about this time derivative of, if I have my time dependent wave function, so psi of x t squared, and we can sort of define the, the time derivative of this, just like we did with charge density here, as minus the der uh, the derivative of a probability current, and this should really technically I should make that a partial too. So I can define that as uh, partial, and I'll follow Townsend's notation, and I'll call this j sub x. Um, so again, so sort of we're defining sort of the 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 probability current density j sub x in this way, and I'm just using the, this example to sort of motivate why this would be analogous, right? What, it, what, what this is saying is that my probability density for finding a particle can't sort of magically be created or destroyed, but has to sort of be transported in by this probability current. Um, so it's sort of, it's, it's, um, let's think of it as, as sort of rate of transport of, of probability, um, Per, uh, per, uh, per per unit uh, per unit area, I suppose. Okay. Now we actually calculated what this was in a previous bonus video. Uh, Townsend worked it out in one of the sections in chapter two. We skipped, um, but I actually did do this. Uh, I can't remember when, but it was a, it was a bunch of classes uh, ago, and I think we needed it to think about. Something with with probably uh, something with proving one of the things about uh, the momentum operator, um, and and it turns out that we it, if you sort of start with the time dependent Schrodinger equation, you can calculate this out explicitly, do a bunch of magic, uh, and then you can get the probability density to have the following form. Uh, and let me just make sure I don't get a sign right. So the probability density ends up going like h bar 
over to M I. So I'm gonna we'll we'll apply this to just the spatial part of the wave function, and there's no time dependence in the probability uh, current density anyway, uh, current anyway. So um, I'll just write this as psi star of x uh, d uh, well um, d psi of x dx minus psi d psi star of x dx, and that's psi of x. Okay. So, okay, so we have our uh, prob our, our 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 current uh, our probability current, uh, and how we will want to apply this to a scattering uh, from a potential step is we're going to work out the probability currents uh, for that case. So I'm going to turn to that now. I'm going to advance the page. Um, so just to remind us, right, this is a setup for a potential step, right? We had, scoops this over, right? We had, right, our potential energy looks like this. So here's our V naught, and I'm assuming my energy for now is larger than V naught. Okay. So what we uh, showed, right, was that for x less than zero, the wave function has the form uh, a e to the i k x um, plus b e to the minus i k x for x less than zero, and that for a positive x, we have psi of x equals c e to the i k uh, k naught x, that was k uh, and k naught defined. Oops, don't think you can, I'll just write, I'll just write this down, right? Remember that 2m e over h bar, and we had k naught defined as uh, 2m e minus v naught over h bar. Okay. okay, so the idea is that, right, we, we talked about the fact these plane wave states aren't normalizable. Um, so the, how, what we want to do to think about the probability of transmission and reflection is to calculate the probability current. And that'll let us see how is sort of probability or, or sort of where I, I, I'll find a particle, how is that being transported? So the goal, so the goal calculate probability current for uh, this uh, wave function. Okay. okay, so let's go ahead and uh, so you, I've got the results here for the probability current. Let's just go ahead and uh, let's first do it uh, for x less than zero. So we have Jx equals h bar over 2mi psi star d psi dx minus psi d psi star dx. Uh, now it's plug and chug h bar over 2mi. Okay, so psi star, uh, let's be careful here. So that's an a star. Um, let me just big square back brackets on the outside. We have a star e to the minus i k x uh, plus b star e to the i k x. And I need to now multiply that by the derivative. Uh, so that uh, so that gives me so I'm so notice how there's the the part I'm differentiating is e to the i k x or e to the minus i k x. So I'm always going to pull down a factor of i k. I'll just pull that out now, and then I'll be careful. So uh, for this, we have an a. Uh, we already pulled down the i k. So we have e to the i k x. And then for this term, uh, differentiating that would pull down minus i k. 
but we pulled out the ik already, so we have minus b e to the minus ik x. Okay. Now I need to subtract this other term, so I have psi, so a e to the i k x plus b e to the minus i k x. I now need to take the derivative of the complex conjugate of this. So this is where I need to be a little careful because it's a star e to the minus i k, etc. But so I'll do the same trick of pulling out an i k, and then now let's be careful. No. Uh, differentiating this term, complex conjugated, it'll be a star, I'm differentiating a star e to the minus i k x, uh, so I actually will pull down a minus i k, so I need a minus sign there, so I have a star e to the minus i k x, uh, the complex conjugate of this is b star e to the i k, so I just have uh, b star e to the i k x. All right, a little bit of a mess, but let's just simplify this. Notice I can pull out a factor of i k here. So I get an h bar k i over 2 m i. Let's just multiply this all out. So this times that gives me a modulus square. This gives me a star, or sorry, minus a star b e to the minus 2i k x. This gives me plus a b star e to the 2i k x. Uh, and then I have minus b modulus squared. Continuing with the this other piece down here, I have now, okay, so I have a minus a times minus a, so I have a plus modulus squared of a. This term I have minus a e plus d star, so I have minus a d star e to the 2 i k x. This inner term gives me, if I have a minus b times a minus a star, so that gives me a plus uh, a star b e to the minus 2 i k x. And then finally here I have minus b times b star, so I have minus, uh, and then my exponentials cancel, multiply to 1, so I have minus b uh, modulus squared. Okay, so now notice that my cross terms cancel. So this term cancels with that one here, uh, and then these two terms cancel. Notice I have two of the non cross terms. Uh, so this actually simplifies nicely, so I can cancel a factor of two. My i's go away, so I have jx equals h bar k over m times a modulus squared minus b modulus squared. Okay, so uh, let's sort of physically interpret what's going on, right? So remember how we said that the this term corresponds to like the incident wave. Now well, notice, right? This mean this term in the probability current is positive, right? We know that our incident wave going from left to right should be transporting probability current to the right. And that's exactly what we have. So we sort of interpret this as my incident, as the current corresponding to my incident wave. Similarly, this piece is gonna be the probability current associated with my reflected wave. So my reflected, right? And the sign, right, because we know that something that's reflected is going to be going to the left, right? That's why the sign, this minus sign makes sense. That reflected wave should be transporting probability in the in the negative direction. Um so so that's um so that's helpful. 
Okay, so we now just have to do this for the uh, other case, so for x greater than zero. Fortunately, the algebra is not as messy for x greater than zero. I do the same thing, but now I just have uh, d psi dx minus psi d psi star dx. Right, so now I just have, I just have my uh, c e to the i k naught x to deal with. So forthwith, let's do it. 2 m i psi star is c star e to the minus i k naught x. Uh, and then d psi dx brings down an i k naught c e to the i k naught x. You can already see this a bunch of stuff is going to the exponentials will multiply out. And then we have minus psi, so that's minus c e to the i k naught x. And then psi star d psi star dx will pull down a factor of minus i k naught c star e to the minus i k naught x. Okay. Simplify here, I can notice I can pull out a factor of i k naught from everything. So we have c modulus squared here, exponentials cancel. I have minus minus, so that's a plus, plus c, c times c star, plus c modulus squared, ready, and those exponentials cancel. So now uh, we have. Uh, this is i's cancel. i's cancel, so we have jx equals h bar k naught over m c modulus squared. Again, notice that this is positive. This uh, this is my transmitted current, right? As we expect, the transmitted wave should give rise to probability moving in the positive x direction, hence why this is, the sign here makes sense. Okay. So here's the thing, and here's the solution to dealing with the fact that these plane waves aren't normalizable. What we do is the following. Plane waves not normalizable. We can't really look at the wave functions, but we can look at sort of if, we, if I have a given amount of incident current, how much of that incident current goes to the transmitted current versus the reflected current. Okay. Um, and so, uh, so, so, so you, it's sort of like if you were to think about like I don't know spraying water at you know something it'd be like you know and and you know looking at like how much water you know flowed through something versus bounced back at you know if you were shooting water at like a at a at a mesh screen or something um, where you had some of it going through and bouncing back so we define this oops, define reflection coefficient R, right, as sort of the ratio of my current. So this is my transmitted Jx divided by my incident current, right? Uh, and so this is going to be, our transmitted current is this piece here, right? And so that's going to be h bar k naught over, oh, sorry. Why did I do okay? So let's 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 fix this. It should be reflect, reflected. Ooh, okay. Let's let's a reflected current. Um. So uh. So we we'll want the reflection coefficient to be positive. So I'll actually just take the magnitude of this um reflected uh current. Let me just maybe put an absolute value there. Um. So we'll take this as Right, this piece is h bar over k m b modulus squared divided by 
h bar of k over m a modulus squared, or this reflection coefficient is just the ratio of a modulus squared and b to b modulus squared and a modulus squared. So if we can like do boundary conditions to figure out b in terms of a, we got our reflection coefficient. Similarly, we define our transmission coefficient That's going to be the, the transmitted current divided by my incident current. Uh, and we worked out what our transmitted current was. That's h bar k naught over m c squared. And we know our incident current here from before, h bar k over m a squared. And so our t is going to be equal to k naught over k c modulus squared divided by a modulus squared. Okay, so we're nearly done with being able to calculate this for uh, uh, for e greater than v naught. We now just need to be able to get b in terms of a and c in terms of a. Then we're done. So next we'll apply boundary conditions. So applying boundary conditions, right, so continuity of my wave function, right, so let's see, what did I write? So if I have continuity of the wave function here, and I'm going to apply the continuity at x equals zero. Uh, so what's nice about that is that all of the, all my exponentials go to one. So uh, this turns into a plus b equals c. And then continuity of my derivative. Right, so here, right, I'm just going to pull down ik minus ik, ik naught, if I differentiate that. Um, so I'll get ik a times e to the zero uh, minus i k b times e to the zero equals i k naught c. Let's simplify this a little bit. I can pull out i k a minus b equals i k naught c or dropping my i's I get k naught c. Now this, right, I can just take this and plug that in there, right, and so that knocks out c, right, and so I get k naught times a plus b equals k a minus b. Now it's algebra uh, to find b in terms of a, which will give us our reflection coefficient. Uh, so let's multiply this out. I get k a minus k b equals k naught a plus k naught b. Uh, by assumption, right, so b is, is larger than v naught, k is larger than k naught, so I'll just subtract this over, I'll get k minus k naught times a, having subtracted this term over, I'll shove this term over to the right, uh, and that, so that will give me a k plus k naught b. Uh, and so we get b equals k minus k naught over k plus k naught times a. Uh, and then we can get c by just adding a plus b. Uh, so since this already determined, already has an a, I'll just write this as 1 plus k minus k naught over k plus k naught times a. Here's my a, here's my b. Uh, and then I just need to simplify this, this fraction, so I have k plus k naught, getting a common denominator here, uh, plus k minus k naught over k plus k naught a. Notice my k naughts cancel, so I get a 2k over k plus k naught a for my c. 
So at this point, now we can find our reflection coefficients. So our end transmission coefficient. So my R, my reflection coefficient, we work out, right, our R is B squared divided by A squared. So that was a square with that page go. So right, so I just so B over A is gonna be K over K, K minus K naught over K plus K naught quantity squared. So I'll just write this as K minus K naught K plus K naught the quantity whoops squared. Uh, and then the uh, transmission coefficient, that's going to be k naught over k, uh, c squared over a modulus squared. And that gives me a k naught over k. Uh, and I have c in terms of a here. So c divided by a gives me uh, 2k over k plus k naught quantity is squared. Let's uh, simplify this a little bit. Uh, even that equals, so let's see, I get a four, so I get a four k squared up in squaring this times k naught, uh, but I'm canceling a k, so I have a four k k naught uh, divided by k that's k naught quantity squared there. And that's my transmission coefficient. So that sort of fully specifies uh, this problem, right? Because if I know my uh, if I know my e and my v naught, I can calculate k and k naught, I can now calculate my r and t coefficients. There's sort of one important physical piece that sort of explains why. We should think about this in a, as like as a probability for reflection or transmission. Note that r plus t. Uh, so if I oops, let's use, a, use this part of the paper, right? So this is going uh, to to be equal to, um, right? So I have k minus k naught the quantity squared. Um, plus 4k k naught. Uh, we have a common denominator, k plus k naught, quantity squared. Uh, and so if I simplify this, right, I have k squared minus 2k k naught plus k naught squared uh, plus 4k k naught over k plus k naught squared. But notice now this, the numerator becomes k squared. Now I have plus 2k k naught plus k naught squared divided by k plus k naught squared. If I multiply out the, the denominator, I get exactly the numerator. So r plus t is equal to 1, right? And that tells us that this has a sensible interpretation as a probability, right? If r is the probability of reflection and t is the probability of transmission, those are the only two possibilities. The probabilities ought to add up to 1. So this is uh, an important relation there. Let's uh, turn our attention now to... Uh, we, we've solved this problem for e greater than v naught. Let's turn our attention to uh, when e is less than v naught. Uh, and as we talked about in class, the main thing that changes is the form of the wave function uh, for uh, for um, for uh, for x greater than zero. We got psi. Uh, if x equals this time c e to the minus kappa x, where x greater than zero, and my kappa now right we defined as root two m v naught minus e 
over h bar. Uh, so our reflecting coefficient, right, the analysis of the r coefficient only depended on the, the form of the wave function for x less than 0. That still applies, right, because we still have uh, the complex exponential form for x less than 0. Um, the, what does change is the boundary conditions. So continuity of psi um, turns out to be exactly the same. We still have a plus b equals c, but the continuity of the derivative, so Right, so that so we we have the the left hand the left hand side hasn't changed. We still have i k a minus b. Now I need to think about the derivative of this at x equals zero. So I have a minus kappa uh, c e to the minus kappa times zero or minus kappa c. Uh, so I have now these two equations. <clears throat> Once again, I'll, I'll do the sort of plug-in here. I'll plug that in. Uh, so I'll have i k a minus b equals minus kappa a plus b. Now I need to be a little bit careful uh, because you know I I I I'm gonna have to block out for i's, um, but we can do the, we can do this. So once again, I want to solve for b in terms of a to get my reflection coefficient. So let's do that. So I have i k a minus i k b equals minus kappa a minus kappa b. Okay. Uh, and so solving for this, I have i k plus kappa times a if I add this term over, and then I have i k minus kappa times b, and so I get b equals i k plus kappa over i k minus kappa times a. So once again, now I can go and, and calculate my reflection coefficient. Right. So uh, so if I do b so b squared divided by a squared, I'll just Complex con I'll divide by, I'll just sort of pull the a out and, and just complex conjugate this thing over here. So I get an i k plus kappa, i k minus kappa. Complex conjugate this. Uh, so let's see, that gives me a minus i k plus kappa minus i k minus kappa. Uh, and let's just multiply this whole thing out. So we have k squared first plus i k kappa minus i k kappa, so those the cross terms cancel, uh, plus kappa squared. Downstairs we have i k times minus i k, so it gives me a plus k squared minus i k kappa plus i k kappa, so again cross terms cancel. And we have minus, and we have plus kappa squared. So this is my reflection coefficient. So here we find that the reflection coefficient is one. So sort of so for for the case of e less than v naught. Now everything the the reflection probability is one hundred percent. Now there's a funny thing here, right? Because we know that the wave function is non-zero uh, in the classically forbidden region. You know that we still have this sort of 
uh, exponential decay. So what's up with that? What I can say is that this is once again uh, a pretty, uh, a, 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 a not an uncommon situation in uh, in wave physics, and so there's a really good optical analog of this phenomenon um, called total internal reflection. Um, So you you know how in in optics like if you if I have like you know if I have like glass and like air up here if I have a ray that comes in below this a, a certain critical angle the ray will be totally internally reflected um, and so like everything that comes in here will reflect back. What you don't learn in two seventeen is that even when you have total internal reflection. It turns out that in the in, in air there's this evanescent wave, which decays exponentially, uh, going up. So if this is a z direction, it goes like e to the minus kappa z, where like kappa is some uh, the constant uh, decay like length scale at uh, or one over length scale that uh, depends on the refractive indices. Um, so the, the so like you 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 everything gets reflected right there, if you go and like try to calculate the energy transport in the electromagnetic fields there's no energy transport into the other medium even though like the elect there's this wave that isn't completely decaying um, and you can actually make use of this um, if uh, there's this uh, thing called total internal reflection microscopy uh, where you, you, you can uh, use this, right, this evanescent wave dies off really quickly. So if, let's say you have like fluorescent molecules sort of in the, in, in like the upper stuff here, and you only wanted to like excite fluorescence in molecules that were very close to this interface, well an evanescent wave is great for doing that. I mean, so this kind of uh, total TIR microscopy lets you sort of only look at excite stuff via the evanescent wave that's very close to the interface. I mean, it turns out to be useful in like different kinds of biophysical imaging. Uh, and Preston, actually, you can ask more about that if you're interested. But my point is, uh, so this sort of phenomenon where like all there's a sort of 100% probability for reflection uh, but there's still a non-zero wave function in the forbidden region. That's sort of this is maybe a good uh, classical analog for that. Okay, so we've gone through the gory details of uh, solving for the uh, of working everything out for uh, for scattering by a potential energy step. Uh, sort of the payoff is that a lot of this carries over to understanding tunneling through a barrier. So we'll do a bunch of things where I'll just state a result in class, uh, but you, you now have the wherewithal to work out most of the, de the details uh, for yourself. All right, see you next time.